What's up, board game people? There are some games that just visually grab your eye and demand a closer look. Thankfully, this one comes with a wonderful pedigree and at a pretty good price as well. Let's take a closer look at Crystal Age by Gravita Games. First off, thank you to all the members of my Patreon. It's with your support that this channel remains independent and unfiltered. Thank you all so very much. Corruption of the Crystal spreads throughout the land of Ansel. Your choice? Become a hero, an ally with other warriors of your kind to save the world from the corruption, or embrace the power bestowed by the corruption and defeat the other heroes to become the most powerful. Crystal Age is a fantasy strategy game for one to four players. The game can be played in a solitaire mode for solo play, cooperatively with two to four players, or played in a two to four player competitive mode. The heroes will journey from the wall, the outer rim of the map, through a biome, either the wastelands or the forest, and finally arrive at the crater where the lords of corruption that must be defeated are located. Heroes battle their way through the lands attempting to gain the favor of the guardians who stand between them and the crater. They will battle with any number of creatures that are unique to the biome or the section of the map that they're currently located in. If the hero can defeat a creature, that creature comes under the control of the hero, granting both their initiative and their abilities for use in future action phases. A hero can control up to three creatures at a time. Guardians are powerful, and the heroes must challenge them and win to gain their favor and enter the crater. A defeated guardian lends their special ability to the hero in the coming battles against the Lords of Corruption. To win the game in cooperative or solitaire mode, the hero must defeat as many Lords of Corruption as there are heroes in the game. In competitive mode, it's more of a king of the hill. A hero must move to the center of the crater, draw a crater deck card, and defeat the creature or Lord of Corruption shown. If a player can survive three rounds in the center without being evicted by another hero, creature, or Lord, they win. Combat is mostly dice rolls, seeking to best the opponent's defense and deal sufficient damage. Creatures have abilities and combinations that make them unique and keep the challenge fresh, but it seems that the Crystal expansion really serves to spice the game up and add a final level of challenge and diversity that perhaps should have already been present in the core box. The Crystal expansion adds events and consumables to the mix. Event cards add another layer to the game, adding random events that the heroes will have to cope with while fighting their way through the map. The effects of the events can be both positive or negative. Consumables are just what they sound like. They can be used to grant differing effects and boons for the heroes. The expansion comes with a total of 50 cards to introduce more randomness to the game. Now let's take a quick look at how you can get your hands on the game. There were early bird pledges available at a discount. I'll be listing only the regular pledge prices for each pledge level. As of filming, there are a few hours to still take advantage of the early bird prices if you're quick. At 45 euros, you get the core game and stretch goals with the low corruption pledge. For 54 euros, you get the mid-corruption pledge granting you the core game, premium tokens, the crystal expansion, and unlocked stretch goals. And finally, for 79 euros, you can grab the high corruption pledge, which is the all-in. You get the core game, the premium tokens, crystal expansion, two packs of card sleeves, the creature collection box, dice tray, a cloth bag, and all unlocked stretch goals. This pledge does not contain the extra dice from the add-ons. There are several add-ons for the campaign if you want to mix and match to get what you want. For 15 euros, you get the Creature Collector's Box. This adds premium creature cards to replace the ones in the core box. These include art that stretches the full card with a more minimalist interface on the cards, and a collector's premium box for storage. For 10 euros, you get a premium token set. At 20 euros, you get the Only the Guardians add-on, which seems to contain another set of Guardian miniatures in the premium token versions of the Destruction Gems. For 10 euros, there's an exclusive dice tray, a card sleeve pack that will run you 5 euros, and for 10 euros, you can get the cloth bag with 40 extra dice. This project has several monetary stretch goals that they have planned for once funding is achieved. Stretch goals include player references, new heroes, new lords of corruption, and miniatures for the heroes. Shipping estimates are included and seem pretty standard for what you're getting. Shipping will include taxes and VAT for the listed locations, and they give two estimates for Australia ship depending on the number of backers from the Oceanic region. So let's talk my thoughts and opinions. Crystal Age comes from a great pedigree. Gravita Games' Sink Torvum has been pretty well universally praised as a masterful sci-fi horror game. What's astounding is that this campaign isn't quite getting the attention that should have been afforded to them. 
Crystal Age is a completely new game in a different genre, but it draws from some of the best that Sanctorum offered and presents it in a visually stunning package. This is a compact game that while at first glance may seem a little too simple, but I believe there's a hidden depth that repeated play will reveal. It's quite simple to pick up. The work in progress rulebook they've posted is only around 8 pages long and it's a quick simple read. You get a good feel for the flow of the game, but this is one that will be better played than read about. The rules only present the how. I think physically playing will show the true experience. The art for the game is stunning and the creature collection, while completely unnecessary, looks amazing and I think that it will add a lot to immersion. To me, the crystal expansion seems a bit superfluous. I really and truly feel that events and consumables should have been a part of the core gameplay. Likely, the savings in packaging and the extra rule insert might have paid for the extra 50 cards. I'm also going to throw out there that their first stretch goal is for the player aid. Four cards in total. These should always be a part of the core box, and having them at almost double the funding amount is a bit ridiculous. I hope to see them moving their funding levels around for the stretch goals a bit. I think they could go a long way towards building some momentum for the campaign. Honestly, the Crystal expansion and the player aids are minor gripes, because in the end, this game is a super great deal. This is going to be a good filler game for game night with several different ways to play, an evolving challenge, and enough variety to keep things fresh and interesting. And all of this comes at a price tag that I just can't argue with. $45 for the base game makes buying in quite easy. $54 to grab the premium tokens, which add a great visual pop to the game, and the crystal expansion with the core, again, is not going to break the bank. Then pile on that all-in that basically comes with everything for around 100 to 110 shipped. Again, it's really hard to argue with those numbers. I'd love to see more lords and more biomes added to the game. There's a lot of potential that these two modifiers could create an interesting amount of content to keep the game alive and exciting for years to come. Hopefully we'll see a bit more of this popping up once funding has been reached. My biggest concern will always be the amount of diversity in a game that's presented as simply as this. It lives and dies off of that. Combat is a bit luck based, but what really makes the difference here are the abilities. If they continue to add more and interesting new creatures and abilities, there's a lot of room for growth here. That growth can potentially head off a dominant strategy from forming. For simple games, a dominant strategy can mean a quick death, and that would be a pity here. Overall, if you're interested, the price is low enough to take a chance on it. If Sanctorum is any indicator, this could end up being one of the steals of the year on crowdfunding. Use your best judgment though, and remember to research for yourselves. This was a quick one, but I feel it's a game that really needed some more eyes on it. I'll be back later this week with our weekly news video, and next week is gearing up to be another interesting one. Please consider subscribing so you don't miss anything. We'd love to have you. Also, if you can spare a dollar or two, check out our Patreon page, linked in the video description. Every dollar helps to get some new filming equipment. Thank you all for watching and commenting. Have a great weekend, and play something epic!